morning everybody welcome to not friday it is saturday man i need to make sure i have these uh days uh, corrected but anyways good morning and welcome to our saturday race we will be running qualifications of the mod classes today so six mod seven mod eight mod and so forth and then i'm not sure what we're doing for finals um do a quick scan of the running order so they will oh do you want I don't think they're going to actually do any finals today from what I can tell so we will be going through the mod runs this morning starting off with six mod with O'Reilly Kincaid Toby Shepard and Colton Olstead. You know, the weather today is going to be kind of interesting. We are getting snow right now. And that wasn't quite expected. I mean, it kind of was, but it wasn't. Um, when I was driving in this morning, it was actually pretty nice looking. Clear skies with a few clouds. But now we're getting these, like... I don't know, it's it's kind of interesting. Not really like cloudy. I can see some blue skies up there, but snowing. Kind of interesting there. So, I, I, I want you guys to know that uh, we are filming not just blue lane racers, but red lane racers, obviously, as we are in 6 mod right now. Or will be in 6 mod. Um, and Tammy Marshall is also filming over by that CNR trailer again make sure you go over there say hi to her as well as um, just let her know especially before you race that you want her to catch you uh, on the hill so just uh, if you're here or if you want your racers to be aware of it let them know send them text message or whatever I know they're really busy you get really um, you get tunnel vision as a racer as you're getting ready for the day. So, uh, totally understand that. Um, but if they get around, they see her, if you're in town, let, you know, sh give a little shout out to Tammy. She's over there in the snow like she normally is. She is chilling out over there with her camera and her blue hat on this morning. But she will be capturing those great moments and again CNR trailer cells from Tremont in Utah they are taking care of her I'm really grateful that they're over there helping her out so another shout out there then still west amazing service they they've been so great to work with I, I really hope I can have the same spot next year they've just been superb uh, and getting making sure that uh, we're able to capture these great moments and they're also putting blue lane media on their screens or some of their screens which is really cool it was kind of awkward or not awkward but um, odd for me as I walked out of this place I hear my voice as they're sh showing off the um, Geneva race down below so <laughs> it's kind of fun to see uh, blue lane media creeping into these businesses and it's really fun so let your let your people know that we are live this is free in fact you guys have made this a reality so thank you for that so and then also you know this I, I really do want to say thank you snow devils for hosting this great event a lot of people look forward to it it's a big deal and I'm grateful that uh, we're able to have it again this year and even though I'm not on the hill it's actually I think it's worked out for the better that I'm over here at still west so but anyways thank you snow devil for this great event and bringing us all together this isn't a small lift and I just want you guys to know that we appreciate you and all you guys do here and if you guys want to you can go check out snow devils website they have a live stream there as well 
Um, I've heard it's been a little bit flaky, but uh, check it out. They have more cameras. They have a great announcer, Kenny, over there. Um, really appreciate that guy. I've, I've known him for a few years now. Um, great, great team over there at Snow Devil. So check it out. My videos are available. I don't think I don't know if Snow Devil's live stream will be available later, but you can always come back to Blue Lay Media and watch our videos here as well. Something that we're trying to do, you've seen it periodically, not very much throughout the week, but I'm really trying to get racers to jump onto Blue Lane Media and give us some insight into the hill, as well as, you know, giving recognition to their sponsors because these racers have a great support team and that support team needs recognition. So let your racers know to reach out to me for a link to get onto Blue Lane Media no app to install it's all on the browser so but yeah we we're trying to make blue lane media kind of this unique community based place you know trying to get the racers involved and let you guys experience what they're experiencing oh and there is our first racer That is Riley Kincaid, our first six mod on the hill right now. Riley has been amazing racer, coming from a really good bloodline, take, keeping his father's legacy going. That Kincaid, line. getting it going. Oh, do you want, I wonder if you just, uh, guy got stuck in that rut, if I figure it out, you know, they, I think he's just following that rut a little too much, and had to get out of it to follow the line, so there he is, going over the first catwalk, getting up to, I'm not sure what gate that is, now up to 18, bit of a hole right there, taken nice and wide, Twenty two Riley not laying the hill. Oh no. Gonna get that gate right there and is gonna get a high mark. I believe that is gate twenty five. First racer on the hill, Riley Kincaid. After Riley will be Toby Shepard and Colton Olstead. Again, our first racer on the hill right now. Riley Kincaid, going to get a high mark. Next up will be number 22, Toby Shepard from Jackson, Montana on a Polaris. Okay, Riley coming down off the hill now. Okay, next up is Toby Shepard, number 22. If you're just joining us, let us know where you're watching from and who you're cheering on. And if you don't have anybody in particular, let me know what your favorite classes are. We are in our mod class uh, today, qualifi uh, qualifications with six mod kicking us off. We have number 20, 20, or sorry, 22, Toby Shepard taking on the hill right now. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information on these racers. Um, we usually film the blue lane or the non-pro classes. So if you have any information on some of these racers, let me know. I'd love to hear a little bit more detail about them. Yeah, just put it in, in, in the comments and those comments will get right in front of me so I can see them. Regardless of what platform you're on, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, uh, those messages will get to me. We have currently number 22, Toby Shepard on the hill. Getting up there, getting past that second catwalk. And it looks like that snow is going to become a problem, unfortunately. Kind of covering that view. Toby Shepard making his way up. Toby is our second racer in this class. And it looks like he's going to get her done. One four three fifty nine, I think that's what it was that they announced. One four three fifty nine. I don't have a good view of that timing. Third racer coming up, number 803, Colton Olstead from Canada on a skidoo. This is our third racer in this six mod class. Again, let, let everybody know, your racer friends, that we are filming this weekend. Not just the blue lane racers, but red lane as well. On the hill is number 803, Colton Olstead, making his way up the hill. Colton is riding a skidoo. Curious. They are qualifying seven racers in this class. Okay, Colton making over the first catwalk. Making his way up on a skidoo. Again, this is six mod. Colton Olstead coming up to the second catwalk now. This is where semi-pro finaled and women final yesterday. And now he's making up into new territory. Oh, and I don't know. I, th I think he got that gate. I don't know what gate that is, but I have a feeling that Colton is probably going to get a high mark, but not certain. Colton getting her done back and forth. Up and over. Okay, Colton Olstead is getting a high mark there. 89, Seth Wilson from Bear River, Wyoming. On a Polaris, make his way up the hill right now. And you can see that snow coming down, which unfortunately means that we will probably end up losing visibility. Colton Olstead, or I mean, sorry, Seth Wilson, Bear River, Wyoming, on a Polaris, number 89.
Not sure what happened. Something is happening on that first catwalk, unfortunately. Not sure what's happening there. Oh, man. According to the announcer, he hit that bank. He's he's trying to maneuver it so he can get going again. He there there we go. He's fighting. He's fighting. You never know what's going to happen at Jackson. Never know what's going to happen at Jackson. Somebody could get stuck and you know make it really difficult for everybody else to get up. So if you get up there and get time and the next person uh, ruins it for the rest of the people, then even if it's a slow time, you got up, you got over, and you qualified. Right now, I believe we have one time. Lots of racers in this class. They're only qualifying seven racers. Again, we are in seven mod right now. going to stick it he'll help getting in there not touching him yet okay they've touched him he is marked okay number, number 89 Seth Wilson getting a high mark up there So they are getting Seth Wilson situated. Next up will be number 15, Wes Shelby from Grand Lake, Colorado on a skidoo. After Wes will be Keith Bailey, Russ Tapio, and Zach Fastening. Okay, next racer on the hill right now is number 15, Wes, Wes Shel or Selby from Grand Lake, Colorado on a skidoo. Okay, again, Wes Selby, Grand Lake, Colorado, on a skidoo, making his way up towards that first catwalk. And that's one way of getting across that catwalk, is just jumping it. Wes, make his way up. Now, one thing you don't see, that it's hard, re uh, really hard to, to, uh, to understand, is how steep this hill is really is it is hard just to stand on it without slipping down if you lose your footing you may slide for a while before you can get yourself stopped Seth Wilson getting a bit of trouble right there right underneath gate 26 he's trying to get himself up and he's going to try to get himself going I'm afraid he's not going to be able to do so he needs to get himself righted and then probably get on that uphill side. He's going to try to pin and wiggle it and probably go to the right a little bit and then curve over. I mean, that's where he's facing. Nope. He just dug himself in. One more obstacle for these racers. <laughs> you know, the, there's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot 
of prestige involved with this. So they want to try, uh, you know, keep on fighting to the bitter end to uh, get up this hill. You know, if they get knocked over to the side, they, they want to get that righted and up and going again. Seth Wilson, getting a high mark, or sorry, Wes Shelby. Wow, keep on saying Shell. Wes Selby on the hill right now. Next up will be 517, Keith Bailey, and then Russ Tapio and Zach Wormers. It is super slick. Looks like we're going to have a little break in the snow for a moment. It's starting to look good, so that's great. Yeah, and let people know we are streaming. This is more than just Blue Lane Racers. We have everybody this weekend. Okay. Keith Bailey, next one on the hill. Number 517 from Rona, Utah. On a Polaris. Bailey family, great family. Really enjoy watching them. Keith Bailey next on the line. Okay, there he is. Keith Bailey. Now, Keith had an accident earlier this year, this race season, that kind of put him out of commission for a little while. So I'm really glad to see him racing. But he, he I believe he missed Jackson. He missed uh, the second race in Geneva. At least if I remember correctly, he did. He definitely missed Jackson, but he's up here, not Jackson. No, he, he definitely missed Afton. But Keith Bailey, 517 from Rona, Utah, on the hill right now. Nice. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Randy. Thanks for joining us today. Two opposite ends of the, of the U.S., Wisconsin and Oregon. Really cool. Again, 517 Keith Bailey from Rona, Utah on a Polaris. We are in 6 mod. These are our mod qualifiers today. Okay, coming up to the second catwalk. Oh, had a misstep there. Getting a bit of trouble. Hit that gate, and he is done. He knows it. That is unfortunate. So, gate 22. Gate, uh, gate 22 is hit by Keith Bailey. Hit it. He knew he hit it. He stopped like he should have, which realistically is pretty dang spooky, stopping on that hill. No, did not catch that in time. Keith Bailey hitting gate 22, getting a high mark there. Next up is number 322, Russ Tapio from Battleground, Washington on a cat. Then we'll have Zach Warmers from Bozeman, Montana and Tanner Thomas from Afton, Wyoming. Regardless of the snow, it is a beautiful day here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming for the World Championship Hill Climb. Thanks for joining me. It's going to be a fantastic day, regardless of the snow condition.
So as we wait for Keith to get off, Russ is at the starting line right now. And I don't know, as a pro, I'm not sure how they feel at the starting line, but it isn't, or it is intimidating coming here to Jackson. It is a slick, hard hill, literally hard, as the snow is very packed. It is full of challenges. There's a loss of traction and no forgiveness to this hill. Russ Tapio, 322 from Battleground, Washington, on an Articat, making his way up the hill right now. Crisscrossing that old track, trying to use it the best he can, taking advantage. Okay, coming up to that first catwalk, let's see what he does here. And he's popping over. Sounds like that is the route forward, not ruling it, but to jump over that catwalk. Clear that uh, bottom heel or bottom uh, portion. Okay, coming across the second catwalk now. Russ Tapio on the hill north 322. We are in six mod. Okay, looking good so far. Making his way up. Looks like there's a little bit of a ledge there. Those skis are coming up a little bit. Zigzagging. Okay, continuing up, getting over. Oh, he's making his way up. Look, making it look a lot easier than it really is. Woo! Up and over. Russ Tapio. Second time. One forty-two eighty-three. One forty-two eighty-three for Russ Tapio. Fastest time up the hill right now. Second time on the hill for this six mod class. Next up is one thirty-four. Zach Warmer. Uh, uh, Zach Warmers. Man, that last name is getting my tongue for some reason. From Bozeman, Montana, on a Polaris. Number 134, taking on the hill right now. Getting past the bottom. Getting about halfway up to the first catwalk now. Crisscrossing those old tracks. Now these old tracks are not soft. They provide ledges and drops and a different dynamic as you have to cross them. Watch his, his uh, so he's going to take that bottom berm where it's not as dug in to, to leverage that. And then as he crosses it again, you can see his sled kind of drop into that old track momentarily, but his momentum carry him over. Same thing right there, jumping. Oh man. So jumped over, hit, and lost his momentum and his footing, but he's now going again. Coming up to gate 18 to start side healing between uh, catwalk two and, oh no, catwalk one, two. So he got out of that old track and, is, and you can see how quickly his track slipped out from underneath him. And he's trying to get that that uh, sled going again. He's fighting it. He wants to get up and over. Like I said, right now, most likely, you know, they're qualifying seven. And they need to get a time. You have to, pretty confident, you're going to have to have a time to get up there today. He's fighting it. Okay. He's still trying to get him. I don't know if his sled's running or not. So, as long as his sled is still, still running. Well, he, ha he actually has a time. 
limit too. He can't just stay up on the hill forever. So I think he's trying to get himself out now. So he's going to get a high mark between 18 and 19. I'm going to see if I got that that slide out. Let's look at the instant replay. Okay, so here he's coming. Watch him drop out of that track and watch how fast his snowmobile track slides out from underneath him. So right here, he just kind of falls down. And then right there, woo! It just goes right down. There's no traction. And that what that's what got him into that pickle. And then he got up back in the track and his skis are putting pressure against the uphill. And without that traction, he just digs a hole right in that old rut. So Zach Warmers from Bozeman, Montana on a Polaris. Going to get a high mark between 18 and 19. He got himself turned around and will be coming off the hill momentarily. Next on the hill is number 120, Tanner Thomas from Afton, Wyoming, on a Polaris. We are in 6 mod right now. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from and who you're rooting for. And if you have everybody you're rooting for, I want to hear about what, what, your, what your favorite class is. You know, a lot of people do like these mod classes, seeing what these powerful sleds will do. Six mod. This is our mod qualifying day today. Tomorrow will be mod finals. Oh, look at that track, man. That hill is so slick. So he jumped over and his track followed the old rut. Just no traction. Man, you have to be so careful coming off that track, that old rut. And if you put that sled on its side, then that track only gets a portion of the traction. Okay. Following that rut up, shooting up, getting past that second catwalk. Tanner Thomas still looking really good up that hill. Okay, coming over to this little bit of a rock ledge. You can see the rocks sticking out of that snow. Okay, oh boy, he's slowing down. He's slowing down, but he's going. Oh boy, yeah, he's going. All those ledges are not forgiving. They are hard rock ledges. They are. Uh, the snow is so unforgiving on this hill and they're slipping and sliding all over the place but he's got it done up and over I did not get that time but he has the third time on the hill so he's he's currently third Tanner Thomas number 120 got up and over now we are at Watching number 54, Clint Covert from Idaho Falls, Idaho, on an Articat. Regardless of the weather, it's always a great day to be at Jackson. It is a beautiful day to watch these mod runs. Help me spread the word. Message your friends. Tag me in, in your snowmobile uh, groups. Letting people know that Jackson Hole World Championship Hill Climb is happening right now on Blue Lane Media. 
And it's all happening because Still West has let us hang out on their balcony before they even open. Thank you, Still West, for opening your brewery and grill to us for filming this amazing weekend here at Jackson. Okay. Clint Covert getting over that second or that first catwalk coming up to gate 18 where we've seen some issues he's got he got a little left or wide on that uh, between 17 and 18 but he's back in the track looking pretty darn good right now coming up to that up and over that second catwalk getting turned around unfortunately and up and over they saved the sled. Not sure what happened. Let's go ahead and look at that replay. Clint Covert making his way up in the replay. Okay, gets that catwalk. Now he's, he's pointed way to the right, which I think is a big issue here. Way to the right. And then... He starts wheeling, but he had issues with that gate 21 and got turned around. And look at this. That sled not being friendly, throwing him off. Yeah. Clint Covert getting a high mark there. Next racer is number 844, Lucas Youngberg from Estacada, Oregon, on a Polaris. I'm a little partial to these Oregonians. Lucas Youngberg, number 844. Making his way up the hill right now. Starting to zigzag the old course on the bottom side. It's awesome. Thank you guys for joining me yesterday. I'm wondering if we can get that viewership over 90 today. So spread the word with your friends, family. Letting them know that we are sharing this hill all weekend long. Luke is having a little issue after gate one right below gate 17. He's in a bit of a pickle right now. He's going to have to get up there, get it, get it right it. Then he's going to try to get on that uphill side if he can. He's, he's going to try to do that without tipping it over again. You can see him. Really trying to get that situated. So he dug it in just a little bit so he get that balance. Now he's going to try to fling it. Let's see what he does. It's a balancing act of trying to... Nope. He did not get her done. And he took out that gate 17. So he did get a higher mark than where he first got stuck. He is now... He is done. Lucas Youngberg getting a high mark just above 17. Looking at that replay real quick. So here he is getting going. And it's such a balancing act of trying not to let that sled dig in. But getting the traction, getting that momentum up again it is so unforgiving. And tipped over right there. Lucas Youngberg from Estacada, uh, Oregon, riding a Polaris. Next up will be Carl Kuster from British Columbia on a Skidoo. Number 47C.
want to do a little shout out to all those families back at home those wives and fathers who have to to be at home uh, it sounds a little more brutal than it is but there's there's a lot of support for these racers um, and the family members that they leave back at home because of the cost and the effort that goes into this so thank you family members and community that supports your racers back at home this video is for you number 524 C Calvin or er Ehrman or is this 47 oh. sometimes when I leave snow devil's sight they kind of mess with my my running order unfortunately yeah this is 47 C Carl Kuster from British Columbia on a skidoo Yeah, just watch that, those racers as they hit the old track and watch how their sled responds to it. It's not a friendly experience going past the catwalk, going past these different spots. Okay, going past catwalk one. Looks like that cloud's coming in. We are starting to lose some visibility here. He's going past that 18 to 19 area that we've seen some issues. Coming up to that second catwalk. I don't know how well you guys are able to see that on the screen. I can kind of make it out there. And I can kind of see him. I wonder if I try to adjust the screen a little bit. Nope. It is. That cloud just came in thick. Just thick. You don't see a thing. <laughs> oh, we got a time right there. 147. No, 148, 45. Up and over. That cloud came in and said hello and just really blocked the view. Calvin Ehrman from Canada on an Articat. Number 524C. Making his way up the hill right now. They move that gate two to the left to get out of those bumps. And then they have them crisscrossing. We are in six mod. A little bit past. Probably two thirds of the way through this class. Number 524 on the hill right now. Going into those clouds, unfortunately. And it is th thick. And I've lost him. Look at those clouds. And I don't dare show too much of that Jumbotron just because it will be considered rebroadcasting. And there are some explicit uh, issues with that. Um, but while we're at it, I can just show you the trailer cells. One, four. So 144, 14. Oh, 154. 154, 14 for Calvin Ehrman. Next up is 62, Brandon Tinser from Auburn, Wyoming. Age 36 on a Polaris. That cloud came in and blocked our view, unfortunately. 
Brandon Tensor, number 62, riding a player on his way up the hill right now. He's trying to get into those clouds where we're losing him. Okay, getting up to that first catwalk area. Unfortunate. We cannot see up that hill. But he's still making his way up the hill right now. Getting past the catwalk, the second catwalk. Ooh, there's a gap up here in the clouds that I can spot. Let's see if we can get him. There he is. In a bit of a situation there. He'll help right there, ready to catch him if needs be. We are in six mod. Okay, they're going to help him out. Brandon Tensor, getting a high mark. Right above gate 26. That camera's wanting to wander for some reason. It's driving me nuts. They not tighten something down. I don't know. It's wanting to go to that left to right motion. Brandon Tensor stuck at right above gate 26. Going to get a high mark there. Next up is Cameron Conger from Granby, Colorado, number 725, age 21, on a skidoo, taking off the hill right now. Cameron Conger making his way up the hill. Right now we got a view of the hill, so that cloud passed us by. Cameron Conger from Granby, Colorado on the hill. After Cameron will be Tavern Rupp, my local town guy from Tremont, Utah, and then Cameron Lindsay from Wellsville, Utah, just over the hill from me. Brandon Tensor, no, Cameron Conger on the hill right now from Granby, Colorado on a skidoo. Getting past that first catwalk, did a little bit of wheelie. Good momentum going up. Coming across to that gate 19 where we've seen a few people have issues. Not a problem. Up through our uh, second catwalk. Getting a little wild. We've seen some people have issues there. But he's doing really well keeping that momentum. Really big deal. 
Because once you lose that momentum, you have to uh, try to get it back going. So that track starts spinning, starts having issues. Cameron having some issues there. Lost his sled. It is rolling. <laughs> it parked itself. That snowmobile just parked itself. Let's go ahead and see the replay on that. Cameron Conger getting up there about uh, just below or above gate 25. Track slid out from underneath him and kind of wheelied in the wrong direction. And then he tries right here. He's doing a save. He's trying to save that sled and trying to stop it. And it's just fighting him right there. And then in, you can see it kicks him over and then it, it just kind of perks itself right there. <laughs> Flips over, he'll help running down there. Yeah, it just kind of parks itself. But yeah, that tr that momentum is a huge deal because once they have to get going, you never know when that traction is going to hit and that front end is going to shoot right up. And you don't always have that control you need when it's flying up there. Cameron Conger getting a high mark somewhere between 25 and 26. They're getting him situated. Another cloud is making its way through, unfortunately. Yep, those clouds. Really great view, though. Man, look at that, that zoom. Next up will be number 192, Tavern Rup from Tremont, Utah, on a Polaris. The worst part of racing is that, that starting line. Once you get going, your worries start melting away as you focus on whatever. If the ideal situation is you know what your next move is for the next two gates and your head is looking forward. The issue though is you get in a little bit of trouble and you start looking down, and you start looking at the the just a few feet ahead of you sometimes, figuring out what your next move is. But if you keep your head forward, if you keep that momentum going, then everything goes a lot smoother. Tavern Rup, number one, 192, on the hill right now, on a Polaris. After Tavern, we'll have Cameron Lindsay, Will Burgess, or Burgess, and Bo Richens. Tavern Rup, making his way up the hill right now going past the old catwalk a little higher than what some of the people have hit so far not sure if uh, I mean he did just fine coming into that cloud right where that uh, first catwalk is you kind of see the old or that uh, the snow cat or the sled catch the, the netting off to the right but big old cloud go a little further up and we can kind of see if we can spot him as he gets higher up see if he gets up that high see he will he will tavern up making his way up the hill right now looks like he's getting in a little bit of trouble I'm just looking at the jumbotron I can't see on the screen He is in those clouds right now. I'm trying to figure out what his next step is. He's kind of clearing out, trying to shake it a little bit. But I think he might be parking it. Looks like he'll help is slowly moving in. Tavern Rump. Next up will be Cameron Lindsay, Will Burgess, and Bo Richens.
a very interesting day with these low clouds coming in. We have next 541 Will Burgess from Lebanon, Oregon on an Articat. They are going to a commercial break, so I will do the same. Okay, we are still in six mod right now. I took a small break and apparently they got a uh, racer up before I could get up. I want to say Will Burgess is on the hill right now, 541. Getting a bit of trouble.
Yeah, and thank you, CNR Trailers, for supporting Tammy over there doing her individual videos. If you're just joining us, let us know where you're watching from and who you're rooting for. Today is our modified qualifiers. qualifiers. We have just a handful left in the 6 mod class, and then we'll be jumping into 7 mod. Not sure what this cloud's going to do, if it's going to hang around or disappear on us. Right now, it looks like it's going to stick for a bit, which is very irritating. <laughs> Okay, so the racer on the hill that they're getting off is 185 Cameron Lindsay. Next up is 541 Will Burgess from Lebanon, Oregon on an Articat, H32. Will is our fifth to last racer before we jump into 7 mod. There's a lot of research in these mod classes because they run and qualify mods to the top. And I know a few racers today are hoping to take on uh, or take the title of oldest man up and over Jackson. Yeah, and we are in six mod. Will Burgess, next one on the line. You can kind of see that snow coming down in the camera. But that's not that big of a deal. The big deal is the clouds that are coming over and blocking our view just below gate, or I mean, uh, how was that called? Catwalk 1. So. Okay, we are just waiting for number 541, Will Burgess from Lebanon, Oregon, to hit the hill on his Articat. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I got too excited too early. Here we go. Will Burgess, 541 from Lebanon, Oregon, making his way up the hill right now. That snow is starting to be a bit of a pain. 
Will Burgess make his way up the hill right now? And we're going to lose them in that cloud, unfortunately. Still kind of make out. Not seeing anything. I'm trying to play with the settings, see if I can pull out any person in those clouds. Will Burgess on the hill right now, making his way up. See that thick, fluffy snow coming down right now. Sounds like Will Burgess will be getting a high mark up there. Not sure where. After Will, we'll have Bo Richens, Ben Slensi, or Slensik. Carson Ehrman and then Justin Thomas will wrap up the sixth mod. It is a snowy day here and Jackson on our Saturday mod qualification day. We are in our first class of the day, six mod, and it is snowy. It is it coming down. Zoom into our friends over at CNR Trailers with Tammy right there. Filming. We really want to say thank you CNR for taking care of Tammy. Okay, way for number 278, Bo Richens to hit the hill. There he is. Bo Richens from Idaho Falls, Idaho, on a Polaris. Bo Richens on the hill right now. Our fourth to last racer in this six mod class. Making it up and over will probably get you into the finals. After Bo, we'll have Ben Slitzik, Kirsten Ehrman, and Justin Thomas. Bo Richen making up to that first catwalk, just jumped over, still making his way up. Barely can tell that black blob right there on the screen, zigzagging. 
Oh man. Not seeing a thing now. I mean, just look at that cloud come in. Bo Richens still making his way up the hill. I can kind of spot the Jumbotron having a little bit of a struggle there. Not sure if he's going to be able to break it free. Bo Richens, our fourth to last racer on the hill right now. Going to get a high mark. I'm not sure, but Tammy has a habit of recording that uh, Jumbotron, so you may see more from that uh, on BlueLayMedia.com where we do the individual videos. Again, thanks for joining us, even though we can't see the top of the hill. We are up top. We're and grateful for you guys joining for us. If you make it up and over, there's a good chance that means you're in the finals. We are qualifying today. Bo being the fourth to last racer in this six mod, and then we will ju be jumping into seven mod. Ben Celestic on the hill right now. Thomas will wrap up this six mod class. Okay, Ben Slimsick on his way up. Number 72 from Rock Springs, Wyoming. On a skidoo. Getting past that first catwalk. Hanging it to the left of the main track from yesterday. Coming back in between 18 and 19, I believe that is. Coming up to the second catwalk now. A little to the right, but looking good having to hold that line. Still making his way up. Oof, had a little bit of a hiccup right there. Not sure what happened. He's trying to wiggle himself out. We have Ben Slensick on the hill right now. Okay, he got up and moving again. Not letting this hill defeat him, Ben. Ooh, taking a little wide. Having to jump side to side on that really slick, steep, rocky hill we call Snow Devils Jackson Hole. Oh boy, he is. Oh, he got high marked there. He went too wide. But he's up and over. But going to have a high mark from the second to last gate.
taking it left instead of right. He zigged and he should have zagged. Ben Selensic from Rock Springs, Wyoming going to get marked at that second to last gate. Next up is 628 Carson Ehrman out of Canada on a cat. Okay, there he is, Carson Ehrman, number 628C, 20 years old, on an Articat. Trying to get that right lighting for you guys. Carson Ehrman, second to last racer in this six mod, and then we'll be jumping to seven mod. Okay, coming up to that first catwalk now. Rolled it and made no hesitation making up onto the hill. Now he's going between 18 and 19. We've had some issues here. We'll see how he does. Looking good up to the second catwalk. A little bit more straight than the other racers. Looking really good so far. Granted, we can't see much, but we can see some. Losing him in those clouds, unfortunately. Looks like we might be able to get him a little further up. Man, losing him in there. Up and over. One, four, three, three, nine. One forty three point three nine for Carson Ehrman. Now we have number one twelve, Justin Thomas out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, on a Polaris, twenty seven years of age. The last racer in the six mod class. Justin Thomas on the hill right now, number 112 on a player from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Last racer in six mod. I'm not sure how great the quality of the stream is on Snow Devils but they have multiple cameras on that hill. Justin Thomas making